Here we go again. Take two. Welcome oh. back, St. Louis, to another episode of Who's Talk Mobile, where conversations get deep and intellectual. I'm your host, Artemis Caldwell, founder and CEO of Who Is Incorporated. I guess, man of many colors, probably the main three red, green, yellow. Y'all know him for pan Africanism. Y'all know him for standing up for uh, black unity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Red, black, and green. Red, black, and green. Yeah. My bad. <laughs> Everybody, Cameron Heights. Well, uh, y'all, welcome back, to, bro. Thank you for having me. Glad to be back. Yeah, yeah. So on this episode, man, I wanted to talk about uh, two big ideas. First one is Foundational Black America (FBA), and second that you're widely known for is Pan Africanism. Yeah. So let's go and jump into it and say one. Can you define what Pan-Africanism is for a young black man? Yes, yes. You know? Uh, Pan-Africanism can be defined in three points. Okay. The first point is all Africans are members of the same family, and we identify with the African family first before we identify with anything else. So when you say you're Pan-Africanism, or you're Pan-African, you're saying that I'm placing my membership in an African Community. family first. I'm patient my membership in Africa first before anything else. Okay. Then um, the second principle is international solidarity. So what that mean? International solidarity is when African people we are united across nations. And if you study Black history, you would know that the destiny and uh, the destiny and freedom of African people is connected internationally. So we say whatever they do to you in America, they're gonna do to you in Nigeria. Whatever they do to you in Nigeria, they're gonna do to you in Haiti, in Europe, in China, everywhere Africans are. Yes. Really? Yes. Okay. Then the third one is, as Africa goes, so goes the rest of the world. So what that means is, African people, we have to build up Africa so she can protect us. Because that's one of my points that I disagree with on the foundational Black American thing. They say that we need to get ourselves together here first. I'll be the first to tell you, I'm kind of conflicted with that argument, but I, I'll get into that in depth later. But the main thing is, we need African nations to look out for our best interests as Africans in America and in the diaspora. Because if you look at any other group of people, they have a nation that will come to their defense and it's in their best interest. Africans, we don't have that because no African nation is strong enough to help Africans in the diaspora out. Mm. Well, hitting that proof, help me out. <clears throat> Excuse me. It wasn't it Africans also that participated in slavery and slave trade way before the European even came along? Definitely not. No, no, Definitely no. not. No. Okay. What happened was Europeans and non-Africans came over and then if you read Destruction of Black Civilization you can verify this. All right. They came under the guise of friendship, trade, and other friendly ideals. But what us Africans didn't know is that they were planning to take over the continent. Okay. And we let them in and then they slept with the women, slept with the men, and then you get this mulatto race of people who participated in the non-African side of selling selling Africans. So the Africans sold other Africans into slavery. That's that's not that's not true at all. No, no, no. What they're talking about are mulattoes or mixed race Africans who participated in it. Like uh, I think it was the first episode where I said non-Africans, the non-African side of the mulatto is the side that they were most likely identify with psychologically. Mm. If you remember, I don't know if you yeah, remember, that. I remember that. Right. So they would weave in and out of blackness when it so suited them. But us full black people, we don't have that option. That's why a lot of us, and many of us Pan-Africanists, we are a little skeptical about mixed race Africans joining the revolution. But isn't, <clears throat> but isn't it, isn't it for us to get things together with ourselves. Uh, excuse me, I lost my train of thought. 
but isn't it um, up to us for like for blacks in America to get ourselves together? Right. I'm talking about foundational black America. Right. So here, here is where I'm conflicted to your point. Do us Africans in America get ourselves together here first, or do we try to help it help Africa, Af specific African nations? Uh, that's what it was. So, but ain't it <clears throat> on record that we don't got, we don't have like Africa hasn't seen any votes, uh, any what? What my guy say, Eddie Griffin? It wasn't a boat, a canoe. They ain't saying nothing to come get us. The Africans that were. <laughs> If, that, if, that, if that's an argument you want to place, why would I help a place that has not helped me or I have not seen okay. help me? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So to like, not even to argue with it, but it's to the point where I heard the African pride, but I'm not African. I was born in St. Louis. You see what I'm saying? So as a young black man, how how can I start work, working or walking into that of, of that understanding because foundational black America sounds sounds right to me mm -hmm. because here it is I'm from St. Louis mm -hmm. I can attach my lineage to St. Louis right, right. you see what I'm saying mm -hmm. so now it's like alright now I got a sense of home right? and it feels like the invader or the white man is trying to come in and tell me hey you need to go over here because that's your place Versus, no, this our place. I want to call this home, and I'm going to kick you out. Okay. So, to the first point, the reason why I personally believe that Africa could really help us out is because they were going through things over there themselves. Okay. So, they had Europeans and non-Africans that they were battling with themselves. But aren't we going through things and as black Americans ourselves? So, that would, like, keep us from helping them? Yes, because the main part of white supremacy is they want to stop and prevent pan-Africanism on any level. Right, divide and conquer. Exactly. So, but I'm saying, so, because you're saying you feel like the Americans, black Americans should get get together and help Africa. That way she can help protect us. Right, right. And then, also, you just said a few minutes ago that Africa couldn't help us in America because they were going through something. Why? So, and with that being said, how can you reverse the role if over her, ever since the 60s, even long before, black America has been attacked mm -hmm. and under psychological warfare to where we can't help Africa because of what's going on over her. So, Foundation of Black America, they say, let's fix each other here and then go help. That makes sense to me. Okay, I, I pers me personally, I haven't seen yeah. too many Foundation Black Americans say that. I'm not saying what you're saying is wrong, but right. me personally, for the people that I've seen, I, I haven't seen that. But I'm going to get into that, that, that a little bit later, because I have something that I wanted to say first. So, um, it depends on how you look at it. Here's my question for the Foundation Black Americans. Do you think we will ever be classified as American? If we are American... Why is there a genocidal campaign against us if we're truly American? Obviously, they don't see us as American. We were brought here from Africa, so it doesn't matter how long we stay here. They see Africans. They don't see Americans. But what's, what about the argument to say that we were already here before they got here? Oh, man, those Aboriginal people. Oh, Lord Jesus. No, I, 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 those no, Aboriginal no. Native people. That they are very big pet peeve because they ignore that yes, of course Africans were already were here in America. But are we just going to deny that there were Africans shipped over here as well? So it's a two part argument. I feel that. Also, we you said that Af uh, us black Americans, foundational black Americans, I don't classify as that, but I'm just saying it from their perspective. The foundational black Americans, um, we have to get ourselves together here first. True. But do we have the psychological connection to Africa? And the $2 trillion that we have is spending power, we don't even spend that with ourselves. And again, like, which, which perspective do you want to take? Do you want to say, since we're here, we are the richest group of Africans in the world, we have all the know-how, but what we don't have is the unity and get ourselves together here first, 
or do you want to do what other what other races do where they have an economic base and a power base in their home continent where the the continent of their country dictates how their diasporas are treated so in other words there is no strong chinese community without a strong china there's no strong jewish community without a strong israel there's no strong um arab without all the uh middle eastern nations so i mean it's it's a complex question to answer and i will say now that I am very conflicted on which one to go with, but definitely to the Foundation Black American thing, I don't, I don't agree because one, you said, well not even you said, I've seen um, Black American, I've seen Foundation Black Americans say that, and I quote, foundational Black Americans aren't Africans. That's my, that's one of my problems with them. <laughs> Two. Because they say that they're Americans. Right, but okay. we're not American. Right. And that goes to another point before I go into my other point. Kwame Ture Stokely Carmichael said, I don't even use the term African Americans because there's nothing American about us. We should use the term Africans because that's where we are. That is our lineage. That is our root. And and our history has nothing, has been nothing but struggle and oppression and mistreatment and dehumanization in America. So how can you say you're American? When he said he had, in order to get to vote, we had to shed our blood. In order to ride the same bus as them, we had to shed our blood. In order for be, in order for us to get educated and go to school, we had to shed our blood. So, are you pro segregation? No, I'm pro separation. There's a difference. Segregation means, and I think I said this in our second episode. Segregation means that black people get less resources than white people. I don't believe in that. I believe in. I don't even want to say equality because I really don't believe in equality because you're, when European, I'll say Europeans don't believe in equality and non-Africans don't believe in equality. So, and there can be no equality in white supremacy. But before I get off, before I get off track, I am, pro, I am separation because that means black people, we can be independent of ourselves and it doesn't matter what any other race of, any other race of people is doing. We know that we have the structure, we have the unity, and we have everything we need to defend ourselves. Because we could not build another black Wall Street and then not have a black militia or some type of means of self-defense. So that's why I am pro-separation. I want us to be independent and I believe in self-defense. So PSA to non-Africans, if you don't want us messing with you, don't mess with us. I'm not pro-aggression. I am pro-self-defense. So, in other words, don't start no stuff, don't be no, won't be no stuff. Don't start no stuff, won't be no stuff. So if you leave us second, alone, so we'll leave you alone. Second, what was your second point? My second point is um, the Foundation Black Americans, they wave the American flag like it's something to be proud of. And that goes back to my other point. We are not Americans. Uh, if we are American, how can we um, how can we say we're American when you, white supremacy is trying to commit genocide against us? They are literally trying to kill us in this country. So how are we American? How? So you saying in a way that the only reason why they're saying they're American is because they were born here. Exactly. And you saying where you being born doesn't make you from this place. Exactly. It doesn't matter where you are born as an African. You will be seen as an African, not your nationality. You will be seen as African first. So the reason why they are committing this genocide against us is because one, white genetic survival, and two, they know we will never be American and we have no rights in this country. So, so how can we be American you, when, when we're not even citizens? So do you know we're about the, here. with Willie Lynch letter? Yes. Okay. We so, would never be American. So with the Willie Lynch letter, what do you know about it? I know that it was a way for African people to be slaves and how to keep them as slaves. And one way to keep us as slaves is for us not to identify with our roots. Yeah. Just because you were born here does not make you American. Like, there's a saying, 
You're not African because you were born in Africa. You're an African because Africa was born in you, no matter what your location is. So I take the the Haitian historian slash lecturer, Bayana Bello. She said Africa is everywhere Africans are. Right. So So you so with Pan Africanism, you say identify with that continent. Not just a specific country in there, but the whole continent. And yes, and the whole diaspora. Like I said on Twitter, don't ask me where I'm from. As a Pan-African nationalist, I rep the whole continent of Africa and the whole diaspora. So wherever Africans are, that is where I am too. Hmm. Because to my second point of Pan-Africanism, international solidarity. So I know that whatever they do to us in America, they're going to do everywhere else in the world. That's the, that's the simplicity of white supremacy. They do the same tactics everywhere. And we still haven't came to that realization, and we still don't, we still don't understand that we still haven't really done anything. So what? So what am I to do against that? What as as a young black man? Because mm -hmm. you, you're saying a lot. As a young black man in America, I want to join the fight, be a part of the revolution. I want to learn my lineage, really get down, and not necessarily stick it to the man, but get to the bottom of who I am what is what was how did you get here did I get here I got here were you talking about to consciousness or do you mean just that 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 black state of mind consciousness how does a young black man get to that so that we can start practicing unity uh, economic structure with each other ec uh, economic growth with each other how can we start bringing that back because the Willie Lynch letter outlined three things to disorganize the black community or the slaves. He took three things. He took fear, envy, and distrust. Those three things, you can see that now play out all throughout our community. Definitely. In, in, definitely. 20, in 2020, and he said, <coughs> excuse me, in 2020, and he said this in 1712. Facts. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, with that being said, we've been, as black Americans, we've been under attack for so long True. that I cannot help somebody else if I'm getting beat up too. You see what I'm saying? Right, and, right. That's, and from that, with this information going forth, like, now, now I know I've been brainwashed. Right. Because I did my history. Right. I did my homework. By me now knowing I've been brainwashed, now what do I do to get to be like you, Cameron Hines? Okay. So I, what you what you just said was very very interesting, and that goes into my point of Pan Africanism. Uh, so you just highlighted it without even knowing you highlighted it. So say for instance, uh, Europeans are the global minority. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use one for Europeans and then five for Africans. Let's say one European is beating up. Five Africans. So one European is beating up five Africans. What I'm gonna do as a European, instead of um, fighting you per se, I'm gonna have you fighting amongst yourselves. And I'm gonna find every little difference I can find to put you against each other. So then, once I come and fight you, you're already defeated. So you, so you just say, so you said, how can I fight someone else and I'm getting beat up? Here's the question though. Well, here's, here's not even the question, here's a statement. If you and another black person have this have a common enemy, shouldn't you unite to defeat that person? So to my to, to my point, you said, how can I help somebody else when I'm getting beat up? You have a common enemy. So you can unite to defeat them. Africans can unite with other Africans to defeat non-Africans. So, so it's not plan? an individualism thing. They're all coming after us no matter what. So why not unite? So what's so what's what's your plan against fear? Because here over in America they've shown any freedom fighter, you will die. We will kill you. Right. What is your plan against that? Self-defense and understand, understand, understand and overstand that freedom isn't free. So you're the saying the price of freedom is death. We got, we have to die in the order or be ready, or let me say we have to die to be 
free, our God-given, our God-given right. I believe our God-given right is peace of mind. However that is, or whatever it is that you desire, however it may look. Mm -hmm. But God-given is peace of mind. Right. But well, we That's, can't have that under white supremacy, though. So, But no, so you're saying in order for black people to get peace of mind, God, a God-given thing, yes. we have to die for. Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying, because how can we have peace of mind when we have PTSD from segregation and the quote-unquote black on crime, which doesn't even exist, because they, they took our resources away? How can we have peace of mind when we're being murdered by the cops? How can we have peace of mind when we are being discriminated against in the public school system? How can we have peace of mind when we have the justice system rigged against us? How can you have peace of mind as a black person in a white supremacist system? James Baldwin say, to be a Negro in this country and to be relatively conscious or conscious is to be in a constant state of rage because you know there is a system that wants you dead. So how can you have peace of mind in a system like that? That's like being numb to your own mistreatment. Like, how can you be oppressed and it doesn't bother you? How? So for us to be angry is healthy we just have to have healthy channels to release that so we don't so we don't use that against each other but there is no way a black person can have peace of mind you know what's crazy and the unless, making unless of a you, slave unless you don't identify that you're under a white supremacist system uh in order the making of a slave outlined and showed that uh what how the same guy willie lynch uh the making of a slave he outlined and showed um, what, like, how to break black people from their natural state. You know what I'm saying? He broke it down like this. Like he said, so what you do is you take to, out of the crowd, out of the crowd, you take three people. Two of them are going to be men, and one is going to be a female. Now listen to this: the first female, excuse me, the first male is going to be the biggest, meanest, burliest dude you will find. Yeah, butt breaking. Yeah. Yeah, and you break him down. You strip him. You strip him naked. You tar and feather him and whip him. After you whip him, you tie him up to four horses, each limb by limb, and you beat the horses until they pull him apart. Set him on fire as well. Yep, and or annually rape him. Yeah. And to the point where now, to the second guy, all he do is, because he's petrified by fur, all you do is whip him to almost death. You know what I'm saying? And then leave him alone. He ain't gonna do no more. And by you leaving the female alone, she's stunned. You know what I'm saying? She sees all this and you didn't touch her. So now inside of her, it's gonna be like, I need to be my own protector because the male image, my provider, my protector has now been destroyed. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So now, ever since 1712, we can see how systematically the independent woman, the rise of the modern woman, was already calculated. Yep, and that's part of feminism, too. Yeah, and what's crazy about femin excuse me, feminism is that it was just the white woman trying to separate from the white man and brought in the black woman. So to, to help the numbers with them like because you did because like you said we are the numerical majority so if you can win in numbers you know what i'm saying let's let's get it going so that's where with this all being said man i'm just trying to really nail down because we're saying a lot of information here you know and it's to the point where i don't know you good man because this information needs to be talked about about with Excuse me. This information needs to be talked about with excuse me, young black men. You know what I'm saying? With people of our community. That way, because just by you saying uh, FBA and Pan-Africanism, that's a division right there. You know what I'm saying? And it's just on the tip of why can't we all have the an argument to come together? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Mm, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. And even... Like I text you, like I said, I'm going to be on call with them because like I told you, there's some things that I agree with with foundational black American. The waving of the American flag is not one of them. Right. The classifying as American is not one of them. 
but the things that I do agree with Foundation Black American is they are prioritizing reparations. Okay. I do agree with that. Okay. Definitely. That's one thing I agree. Okay. And two, they they want tangibles for their vote. So they are saying, and I tend to agree with, we're not going to give you our vote unless we get tangibles, unless you do something systematically for us and for us specifically and exclusively. We don't want anything watered down for people of color, for poor people, for minorities. No, 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 no. If you want our vote, you're gonna have to do something for us specifically. So those are two things that I agree with for the Foundation of Black American, and I will always, always be on code about that. But those two, those other two things that I said, I definitely don't agree. But we can we can agree to disagree on that. But we're not even but. Um, like, of course, we're not going to agree on everything. And, of course, like, I'm not going to disrespect Gabe or any other foundation of black American. You can claim that. I disagree. We we won't come, come together over that, but we can come together over reparations and the tangibles for our vote. Hmm. Now, so let me, let me guide this right back because uh, I wanted to ask you a question uh, before we got jumped off where I was going with the Willie Lynch and the black woman. Were in this revolution or in this coming to consciousness where and you still haven't answered how do i get to become you um where is the black woman at in this where where where, where does my lady play my girl where, where what's her role in a fight like this i'm glad you asked that so for the for the black woman you also need to learn self-defense yes you do and for the woman they are the first teacher. Like, I take the position there is no African revolution without the African woman because she right. is the way that we can reproduce. So, to the African man, so that's black man, you need to protect her because when you protect her, you protect yourself. There is no one without the other. The woman is the first teacher. She is the one who is going to cultivate the mind of the African youth. So she, in, in and of herself, needs to be trained how to raise a child, how to take care of a family, and how to be able to defend yourself. Because really all these things is nation building. It, exactly. You know what I'm saying? It's exactly what we're trying to do. I feel, speaking like, of that. I feel like they we've warped the idea of, oh, a woman's role, a woman's place is to raise the family, da 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 I feel like that role has been warped to be like, demoralized and like that's all you worth you know what I'm saying versus if we could start teaching our young ladies that or our women that hey by you being the first teacher to your child your child the children are the nation you know what I'm saying so if you could raise your child right give them the pride give them the proper love and you know what I'm saying respect or decency that they need or have it may be to raise a child give them those things and now you can properly see okay now my nation is doing better. Right. So that's, that's what we're on. Yeah. African nation building internationally. So foundational black Americans, you can claim that. I don't claim that. So we really, can disagree. Women all that. around the world need to come Yes. Together. Cause I read before the black man. What you mean? Uh, before the, nah nah I would say at the same time. <laughs> nah I'll say simultaneously. So so, in the rebirth of African civilization, also by Chancellor Williams, that's the second part to the structure of black civilization. Okay. The woman needs to uh, understand her role, and arguably, she you could argue she's more important than the man hmm. because she is the first teacher. That's what, uh, again, to making up a slave, that's where he said the woman is the most valuable. Exactly. Yeah. That, 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 that's your bread and butter. The man. Exactly. He I, but the woman is your bread and butter. Right. Because she could teach, she gonna teach her son how to maneuver a certain way. She gonna teach her daughter to maneuver a certain way. But if you could break her, then those two kids ain't go ray, ain't go go against her because that's right. their mother. You see right. what I'm saying? And I definitely don't take the position that a woman's job is to just cook and clean. If you study history, some of our greatest freedom fighters have been the, women. Yeah. The civil rights movement was started by women. Martin Luther King was just the face. And study Queen Nzinga. She is in the destruction of black civilization. Say it one more time. Queen Nzinga. 
Queen and Zinger. So it's N C I N G A. Queen and Zinger. And if you study, she was in Africa. Now if you study, um, oh my gosh, I can't Queen Nanny. She is she was from Jamaica. You can study Amy Jakes Garvey, Marcus Garvey's wife. You can do um no Betty Shabazz, Coretta Scott King. Or if you wanna um Hey, who's the one I'm just thinking of? Uh, I was just saying, I was just trying to think of like strong black women. You know what I'm saying? That, but And I was trying to go against like the ones everybody always hears. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying saying? to think of the other one. Um, Anna Murray Douglas. Frederick Douglass' mm -hmm. wife. Okay. Very yeah, because a lot of people, like to Dr. Umar's point, a lot of people like to say and give credit to Helen Pitts. His second wife. Right, right. And they say... Frederick Douglass had a white wife. You gotta put that in context. But his second she, wife was white, after, not his first one. But after she died, though. Right. But to, like he said, he said a lot of women, a lot of people, give Helen Pitts more credit than they give Anna Murray Douglas. It's, that's not right. Yes. Because he didn't have any children with that white woman. He had all of them with Anna Murray Douglas, an African woman. So don't be so quick to say things that are correct factually but they're not in proper context i feel that i would say don't be so quick to shoot down our women now having this conversation i see why we're so hell, hell bent on gotta disrespect the girl gotta disrespect the girl gotta keep her down because that's the strongest one out of all of us exactly and you know what i'm saying so now saying that nice little enlightenment moment i see that you know what I'm saying? So to the black women, shout out. All y'all are beautiful. Definitely shout out. Shout out. Black, black women love. are dope. I had a shirt. I had the shirt on black yesterday. Black magic. All that. Yeah. Yeah. So, now you, that, you ask the question. I still haven't asked. I'm going to get to it. How do right I now. get to be you? Exactly. Yeah. You have to ask questions. The question that I asked to start my consciousness journey in 2015, I asked, how did, this is in 2015, how did black people get to where we are in 2015? Uh, from the civil rights movement to now, how do we get to where we are? That's and then question. that sent me on a lot of fact checking, a lot of reading, a lot of research. So you have to ask a lot of questions to start your conscious, your conscious journey, and you have to read, 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 read. Have good sources. What's the importance of reading? Reading is how you build up your mind. You get new information. You get a new uh, perspective and how to think, how to act, what to do in certain situations. So, and another point of reading is, it goes to this quote, you can't know where you're going until you know where you've been. So we keep saying that a lot of people take the position that we need to let go of the past, but you can't know where you are now unless you go back to figure out how you got there. Because they're going back to just do some fact checking can answer a why did you matter. Right. Like, where do we go wrong? Where do we go right? You got to ask those questions. So we can't go forward. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put a quote out that I don't think has ever been said. Black people, we can't go forward until we go back. I feel that. We can't go forward until we go back in history and read and study. That's another thing that was said in the Rebirth of African Civilization. So history will tell you where you went wrong, where you went right, whether we've traveled the best paths, and it will tell you the path to go forward. So from what we studied, we should come to conclusions that we need to be independent in all areas of human activity. That is non-negotiable. So whatever we need as African people, we should be able to get from said African people. That, 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 that's, that's ground number one right there. Another one, my, that goes back to my other point. The destiny and the freedom of African people is intertwined across nations. That's another non-negotiable right there. There's no African revolution without the African woman. That's another non-negotiable. There's plenty of other non-negotiables. And one thing that we're not gonna do is disrespect our ancestors even though we may disagree with them. Like a lot of, feel that. a lot of, People today say that Martin Luther King was wrong. Was he wrong trying to do integration? Yes. And one thing that you said about him having guns, that was actually right. I fact-checked that. 
he was right. And another Paul thing, Lyman, yeah, yeah, ago, yeah, yeah. And another thing that has been misconstrued about his message: if you study him, you'll know that he wasn't anti-violence. Yeah. He believed in violence yeah. behind closed doors, but we don't study our ancestors. But he believed that non-violence can be pushed further than violence. That's what it was. But right, I would say that's, that's definitely wrong. But, yeah. but no, no, because look who you talk about first. Who got, you know, off rip Martin Luther King, <laughs> excuse me, Martin Luther King birthday coming up versus Malcolm X. Yeah, see, look, versus Malcolm X. I didn't know birthday night. I thought his birthday was different. No, but I'm saying, but you see how we can have a conversation about his birthday, his, um, uh, where he went to school at. He's widely recommended and known. You see what I'm saying? Versus a Malcolm X. Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey. People who stood for, not necessarily violence, but by any means, Mar uh, Malcolm X. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, Marcus Garvey. We, we, just us. You know what I'm saying? To the point where, if I can show y'all, because it was going with the white supremacist outline for us as black Americans and we can pacify y'all not to fight not to rise up because also in the book of making of a slave it said that the slave watchers or the slave owners were already conscious of the slaves coming back and having an argument to them you see what I'm saying they watch with careful eyes careful and precise eyes for the up uprise against us the first hundred years slavery didn't work you see what I'm saying? Slavery was institu institutionalized in 1619, right? They needed Willie Lynch, a British man, to come and tell them. And when I say they, I mean American, American slave owners. They needed a British man to come and tell them, hey, that y'all doing it wrong. Y'all just killing them. And of course, they're going to have uproars and this, that, and the third. You got to do it systematically. You know, so you know what I'm saying? Break down their language. Get them to talk like you. You see yep. what I'm saying? And once, and once you can do that, now we can better control them. And this is where I'm going with it is that, excuse me, with this information flowing to go forward, we got to go backwards. So if we can see that, okay, if Django isn't just a movie, this is really my granddad who's fighting for my grandmother. You know what I'm saying? That 12 years of a slave isn't just entertainment. It's actually history and shouldn't be applauded. This should be a bad, like abolished. This shouldn't even be on television because of the tragedies and monstrosities that really goes along with the story. Mm -hmm. So now I, I have been playing devil's advocate and going, jumping back and forth. But now I see where Pan-Africanism lives. So by doing that history and being conflicted and being conscious, being in that struggle of, of uh, excuse me, what what you say, James Baldwin called it a a state of rage. Yeah. You know, and he's one of my uh, biggest influences. I love the good James Baldwin conversation. Him, uh, Nikki Giovanni, give me give me somebody who at our age, 25, 26, 27, in their 20s were actually standing and having these conversations you know what i'm saying and the list goes on so just again man thank you for coming on here and allowing me to talk with you and having us give this discussion to people because it's the, the, the information man because i feel like we need to by going back and coming forward we can see that by 1712 he used distrust envy and fear we need to use solidarity, excuse me, solidarity and peace to overcome overcome that. You, Fred Hampton, you don't fight five with five, we fight five with one. You know what I'm saying? You don't fight, we, you don't fight racism with, uh, you don't fight racism with racism, you fight it with uh, uh, socialism. There's a question though. Go for it. Who started racism? Racism was just an idea by the Europeans because all of them came over. Racism was just nine. Right. Now, now my next question. Go for it. Who was racism practiced practice against? Blacks, because they were deemed to not have souls. So you can, and they were cheap labor, sources of cheap labor. Right. Gotcha. But we can't fight racism with racism because black people. I said socialism, Fred Hampton. Socialism. Oh. 
Uh, social, uh, you fight racism with socialism. This would be. But how though? Because here, here, here's solidarity my solidarity coming together. Socialism with live with us, with everybody. If you, you, who is everybody? Everybody. You, you would say. I got questions. That a non non African cannot participate in the revolution. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Oh, okay. Well, on the contrary to that, the opposite end to that on the other spectrum is that you can. Like a, uh, like we just said, what's her name? Uh, Frederick Douglass is white, uh, second wife. I don't know. I don't know what she did for the revolution. I'm gonna say that now. I, I, I don't know neither, but it's to the point where him being married to it don't mean a damn thing. I feel you, but on the tip of if you pro black and you can see that because the information that we have isn't secret, right. you know what I'm saying? So I feel as if anybody, if you can see that join that, help that cause, and you really bring down, go against your nation and join us. Oh, I'm glad you just said that. There's there's based Correct. on Correct. what you just said, go against your nation. Yeah. What group, not individual, what group historically or present is willing to go against their group for the benefit of African people? That's what I'm saying. That's why I say, hey, if we do this now, now we going against. You said to go back to go forward. The argument is, I hear what you keep saying, go back to black people, but that's not the argument. The argument is, what what can we do now? Because already I see that black people are, are coming together. So what did you only listen to black people, white people? So now what can I do to get y'all to come together? Because if Willie Lynch and 1712, like I keep saying that you're missing, if he introduced to us and amplified our differences, Okay, well, let's go ahead de take those differences down. We don't have any differences. Ain't nothing different from me to you. So now, can you help me or not is the question. And the only question for black people, can you help me? I don't care what your race is. Help me. Why? Because systematically and historically, this is wrong. If you cannot agree with that, then consciously you're wrong. Yeah, but black, white, or how, whoever you may be, I believe that the fight is for everybody. Help me to win. Because like we said, if already the world was already under black regime, the Moors, and it was in a peaceful state. Right. Who okay? messed that up? Yeah, so let us get that back. If we already have been deemed the one, the peacekeepers and the ones, the top dogs in charge, let us run it. And everybody else going to be cool because we ain't, we don't have that messed up bone, but we'll beat you back in shape. Now that we see that, going forward, we need to beat you back in shape versus just openly allowing you to come into the neighborhood. Okay? So with that being said, now, who can help? Do you see my argument? Yes, but I just highly disagree because mm -hmm. I got to ask you, what group has helped us? And here's another part. But why with can't no we change that? Motors. Change that. Brainwash them. How? Just do what Willie Lynch did. Brainwash them. Far, look, 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 there's a major difference between, uh, between us Africans and then non-Africans. Non-Africans have a code and they have a unity. And the one that break we don't, that. When we, one we don't have, break and, that. And, come together and break that. Everything you saying will be trumped. As all we have to do is come up with our own Willie Lynch letter. Come up with our own. And, Willie and what Lynch group? Letter. And what group is gonna fall for that? It doesn't matter what group fall for it. Implement it. Do it. I'm saying. Do what that, they I'm did say, to I'm us. It, I'm saying it's not gonna work. And and another point. Um. Uh, but, that's, but that's what I'm saying. I'm saying do that to them. It's we you can brainwash somebody easily when you start their youth. The kid there, everybody wants to be black at this moment in time right now. Everybody wants to be black but don't want to be black. Alright, so what, what you that's do what I said on Twitter. Yeah, so what you do is just take that from their children. Their kids want wanna be black and follow us, so now you start having them follow us. Boom. Now they listen to rap music. Now they want to say the N-word. Now they want to be black. Oh, now man. now you can start brainwashing them to be what you want. You see what I'm saying? Like they did with us. White women already like black men anyway. Fetishizing. That's not real love. So, but that's it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't so it, matter. It doesn't because she's already, if I, you ask a black man why you like a white woman, because she's submissive. 
So with that being said. But that said, goes back to white supremacy though. Hey, doesn't matter as long as she's on my team. She's not on your team. If I can brainwash her and break her like they did our black woman. And you think that's gonna fall? You think How? How? How's that? I can tell that that's not gonna work. Bill Cosby. He messed with a white woman, he in jail. Okay. We had a and if uh if you study slavery, black men were lied on by the white woman to the white man that the black man raped them. Yeah. And now, look, we strange fruit hanging from a tree. So sure. that is that is not gonna work. That's a no move. And then also, dang, I just I just I just remembered it and then I just forgot it. Oh, uh, and another point is before I, I still haven't remembered it, but I'm just gonna say something else before that. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is understand that we have more similarly similarities than differences. One, and then you, you ask, what do we do? Unite with other Africans to build in, and build institutions. Because this is another quote that I came up with. I said, the purpose of my page, and I guess I'll just add my life is to awaken the African mind, to unite with other Africans, to build institutions, to destroy white supremacy and end white oppression and end African oppression globally. Boom. So what is your plans of attack against psychological warfare? Ever since that's been declared on black people ever right. since you have, to, you have to know who you are. A lot of us don't know who we are. We identify with our slave master. We identify with being American first. We're not African first. Mm. Because white supremacy through the media has has shown us the worst parts of Africa. So that goes back to an earlier episode where they don't want us to link up because Pan-Africanism is the only solution to white supremacy. Oh, and another point that I remember non-africans they know who they are we don't know who we are and i don't think that was the point dang it <sighs> i have a massive brain for it. it it was it's on the tip of my tongue um oh yeah i remember it now okay. african non-africans are not going to unite with africans for our benefit because like the Church of black civilization White white power and black power are a contradiction. Black power can end white power. So why would non-Africans work with non-Africans to destroy a system that they benefit from? If they unite with us, everything that they've garnered at our expense will, will die, will go away. So they have wealth because of us. If they unite with us, with no ulterior motive, and they're just doing this out of the kindness of their heart. They are going against their own people, and that is off code. And non-Africans have a long history of always being on code for their people. They are race first, and Africans, we are not race first. So to that point, that is that is not going to work. Now, can we? Um, now, can we use Europeans? To our benefit, yes, but they are not going to unite with us. But that's to, that's what I'm. That's what I said you was missing. That's what I'm saying. You know, yeah, we could use them to our benefit, if, but not in the way that you're saying. I'm saying if we could turn all black people take over. Now everything says under new management. Every all things owned by black people. That's not going to. We're not gonna say the white boy can't eat because you come into Chick Fil A. Just no, no, no. now that I own Chick Fil A, I'm just going to use y'all right. to keep continue building it. Right? No, 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 no. Now I see you got to kick them out because they, no, 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 they don't kick us out. They gladly take our money and enrich themselves. And that's what I'm saying. Right. Flip that. That's why I say the psychological warfare with the Willie Lynch letter. Come up with your own. Hey, outline that. These are the differences that they've outlined in 1712. Y'all, black people have no code, no code of conduct, nothing to follow. They have outlined their basis of attack and showed you. You have no form of attack, is what I'm saying. Well, we do, we just haven't utilized it. Yeah. Do that so that y'all can stop being under attack psychologically. Because psychologically, we can see that you will lose the war all in all through and through. Right. If you don't have your mind together. Right. Now, going back to your point about Go the Chick-fil-A thing, we can definitely 
take their money because they take ours definitely. I just don't agree with the other the other points that you were saying about the sleeping with the white woman and all. No, 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 no I don't agree with that. I but I do. That. Huh? I ain't say that. What you mean? You was like the black, the woman loving or falling in love, quote unquote. I said because she that's not should real. help us. But she's not going to because that's going that's to be I'm all just, I'm just, you know, just, I'm just sure saying. Yeah. And we can definitely use their money to enrich ourselves. Absolutely. Like as a black hurt. business, as black business, you, as long as it's not a cultural product, like don't sell our cultural products to uh, non-Africans, like the clothing, etc. But just on a uh, basis level, you can definitely um, use them on, on that level where you, you sell to anybody, not cultural products, I want to be clear, you sell to anybody, but you only buy from Africans. Absolutely, you can do that. There you go. Yes, definitely. All that other stuff, nah. That's essentially you agreeing nah. with me. You are. Because who else, who else going to buy the product? My white wife. I, but, but she, but here's, she's here's sleeping the with me, too. She's, I'll be like, hey, go over there and go buy that. And guess what she going to do? She going to go over there and go buy that. Why? Because it's been a long history of white women being submissive to the black man. You agree with me there. Right, right. But, so but not on awesome, the other, not on but the you other agreeing things. with me that by her lustful for the black man, she's gonna spend her money, her white dollar, with the black community. Why? Because you're lusting over us. We had disagree on that. How? Because Don't white women spoil black men? But how many institutions do we have, though? It don't matter if the black man say, hey, go over here to this black black store right there and buy that. It's plenty of accounts, even on your Instagram page, where you see a white woman cooking a, a non-her a non -her cuisine. It's, it, it, it was whack, by the way. It doesn't matter. But because he told her to do it, we'll she did it. It doesn't matter. See, now you're arguing people small things. And I'm saying that it's to the point where if I if he tells her to do so, black people have that that control. Why but don't do you we, guys do do that? You you disagree. But when but when historically has that ever happened? That's my question. That's what I'm saying. If we gear toward that, which is why I said the war on the psycho on the psychological mind. But I'm saying like can you give me an instance historically where that has happened? It doesn't have to be. I don't have one. That's work. what I'm saying. But so look, that's what I'm word. That's what I'm saying. Do it. Just say, you said in order of us for to go forward, we gotta go back. Well, we seen what happened when we go back. That we it has never happened before. So in order to have a revolution, you gotta do something that you've never done before, right? Right. I agree. Okay. With that. So now Man, do well, that. Well, somewhere we have done something. But, yeah. but I'm saying do that. A revolution. No revolution is the same. So you right. have to do something different. Okay. I've seen that. Okay. I agree with that. We can manipulate. The white dollar. How? Because now is a prime time that everybody wants to be in the culture. If now only black people own this, but we don't. Doesn't matter. Let's reverse the role. Now say only black people own this. Now we can start manipulating the white dollar into our benefit. Like Gabe would say, gen gentrification would we can help that can help us in a way. You see what I'm saying? To the point where now, if we could start manipulating them like they manipulated us. Let's get back on this on this fight. To where now we have us five against that one white dude. To where now, at least if I could get the Pan-African the Pan African, and the FBA dude to join each other, fight off these three and this dude. Now we, now we get, now we coming together. Right. You see what I'm saying? Which is now to the point where that's all I want. That's all I want you to do is just fight with me. Which is why I say you agree. You just don't know you agree. Because it's a lot of words that's been said. I'm just saying no, no African person is going to help us. Oh, here's another example. Go for it. Kim Kardashian. The, these people that she let out of prison. That's not out of her own... Um, that's not out of the kindness of her heart. Yeah. Europeans have a history, which is why I disagree. But I, I, I may disagree on little things that you're saying, but not the big scheme. Um, Europeans have a history of giving us something, but taking more. The Ma like I told you, the Ma Machiavellian give in order to take. Mm -hmm. Like Meek Mill, they let Meek Mill out of prison, but then they put Bill Cosby in. They gave in order to take. Like 
like they did, like Warner, I think it was Warner Brothers did with um, Prince. They gave him his masters, but then he ended up dead. Hmm. So they don't do things out of the kindness of their heart. They all, they almost always, and I, I damn near say always, have a hidden agenda. Okay. So that's why I may agree on the small thing, but I, on the small like tickets of it, but I disagree with the, in the big scheme of things. Hmm. On a racial level, I disagree. I Maybe on an individual level, you may have a point. See, and to that code, I live, I live my own life by a certain code. And one of those rules is, is one is uh never trust a man that takes more than he uh that takes more than is needed and gives less than he is owed. So if all of us would just implement this one rule that I follow, you see what I'm saying? Then our code could come together. I'm not saying I got all the answers or whatever or all fall in right. line, but it's if we could just sit down, think again against psychological warfare that's been waged on us since 1712. That's historically proven. I'm sure I can show you that. That now I could change the mind of a 1712 Negro to keep on arguing that we're separated. Then I can now just sit down and show you like, well, let me come up with some things on how we all can get on code. Let me come up with some things on what it is that we really should be going toward. And these would be like the solutions that we'll really be looking for. Which is why as young black men, I like these conversations. Because now we can just battle up the mind. You know what I'm saying? Where do you stand? Where do I stand? You know, and it's, we stand together. But just because we different don't mean we can't unite. That's all that I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, That's because so if you know, I want I want to be very, very clear. If you know as a black person... I don't care what you identify as. If you know that we are under the system of white supremacy and you know that non-Africans, all non-Africans are our enemies and you want to unite with other black people to destroy white supremacy and end African oppression, I rock with you. I don't care about all that, all them other categories that you identify as Christian, Muslim, Moor. I don't care about any of that. They got to be black. Right. I don't care about any of that. Okay. Race first. Okay. And then you saying on that tip, the help that is coming has to be black help. Um. Yeah, yeah. What must be done for Africans, it must be done by Africans. Or if okay. Now I, you see where I say you agree with me. What you mean? You do, because remember how we was we just got out of the argument and said that I'm finna let you finish. So go ahead. All your help only has to be black. Yeah. Okay. But okay, so I'll, I'll play a little bit devil's advocate for you mm -hmm. and be on your side. Mm -hmm. If we're going to have non-African help, set it up in a way where we benefit and they don't. Or or we or we benefit more than they do. I just said that. Because, like, and you will probably agree with this, non-Africans have a history of trying to unite with us and then at the end of the day, they benefit and we don't. Yeah, we just this is the whole argument. That's why I said you agree with me. You just a lot of words had just been said that you just got lost in. I told you this. No, so you agree. I, I, I agree on. I get on. Because that's just a, you not just, on a not on a big level, but on a small but, level. But you just sure. you just said that okay, if we can manipulate them to where we benefit more, then let's do yeah, that. That's my devil's advocate. Boom. But I'm saying, but my, but my counter argument to that would be. What African person is gonna? What non-African person is gonna do that though? I mean, who knows that they've been manipulated? That, that's the question to you. Who knows that they've been tricked upon? If you if you can't cast a good trick on somebody, you're not a good trickster. Boom. Again, go back to the mind. But even then, non-Africans they are more psychologically aware of the reality than we are. I mean, so, so that goes back to the psychological warfare. Where we don't even know who our enemy is. We don't know who our allies are. That's why I say go back to 1712. You can see this. And now that we already passed that. Now what you do is. Because I, I just went back to go forward. This is my plans of attack. Mm -hmm. To go forward. All you have to do is. Do the game that they've been doing to you. If you can't manipulate them, don't do it. Find another way. Right. Like Martin Luther King, he found another way. Malcolm X, he found another way. Marcus Garvey found another way. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, and my question would be, what non-African is going to help us 
with no uh, ulterior motive. Like back to the, I may I may be get very nitpicky with this, but she was like that the the, the, the uh, white woman who's lustful over the the black man. Mm -hmm. My question is, um, white people or non-Africans, they have a history of when that black person dies or when something happens to them, they don't spend their money with African people. Like Kobe, he identified more with the Hispanic Vanessa Bryant than he did the black side. Okay. And am I supposed to be under the assumption that Vanessa Bryant is going to spend her money with black people just because she has biracial kids and was married to a black man? No! I don't believe that. Non-Africans are loyal to their race first, no matter if they're sleeping with a black person or not. So that's what I said in my, that's not, that's not exactly what I said, but that's a, I can paraphrase what I said in my video. Non-Africans can sleep with an African person and still be racist. Mm. Right. So, I, like I said, I, I agree on a small level, not on the, not in the big scheme of things, not on the big racial level, maybe on a interpersonal level. Yes, maybe, but not on the, not in the big, no, because hmm. that they're not going to help the race. And if they do help a black person, one is never going to be out of the kindness of the heart. They're going to have an ulterior motive, and what they, th what they help that black person with, is not going to trickle into the race. Hmm. So, okay. And again, I still say. What if that white what okay? What if a white woman had walked you into your consciousness? Then what? I still can't trust them because our history has showed us if every time we trust Europeans, we end up in a bad situation. Like for instance, the Tuskegee syphilis experiment. We thought they were helping us, but they gave us syphilis. Europeans Europeans and non-Africans have a history of not being able to be trusted. Who who do you know trust their enemy? I feel that. So non-Africans are our enemy. Okay. So if you're going to interact with them, be the spook who sat by the door roll, take what you can from them, learn how they play the game, and then get out ASAP. Because the longer you stay in, the more you are likely to get disrespected, mistreated, and you may even turn into a coon. Mm. So... Get, get their knowledge and get out and build. That that that, that that's oh, that's what I believe. Mm. So I think that's what you're saying. The spook who sat by the door. Mm. In other words, get what you can from them and get the hell out. Who wrote that? I'm not sure. I'm, dang, I, it's right into my tongue. I had it. I lost it. Uh, Pan Africanism versus SBA. Yeah. FBA meaning Foundation of Black America. Foundation of yeah. Black America. I am on code with y'all. Oh, everybody with those two instances, but not the other ones. Okay, yeah. Reparations so, yeah. and tangibles. Yes. But no American flag waving. No, no, no I'm American sure. flag waving, no identifying as American, no. Yeah, but man. I'm still on code with y'all no matter what. On code. Hey y'all, we out. Artemis Caldwell, founder and CEO of the world's best ground changing. Nonprofit organization out there. We gonna do magical things. Who is incorporated? This is the podcast. Who's talk? Uh, where conversations get deep and intellectual. Your guests coming back. Always Cameron Heights. Everybody again. Artemis Cam. Artemis and Cam. Cam and Artemis. We out of here. The Who is community. Love y'all. See you. <laughs>